Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick little video on this device, the Roland TR505 Rhythm Composer, aka drum machine, aka drum computer, however you want to call it. A uh, little backstory behind this, I, I owned one of these back in the, uh, the late 90s, by 99 or 2000 roughly when I bought it. I got it on eBay, it was 50 bucks used, and I kept it for roughly 10 years. It was probably around 2010, 2000. 11 that you know I hadn't been using it for a while I kind of got out of gear for a bit so I sold it on eBay for about 50 bucks and recently um, I've discovered that I wanted to get another one because I missed it um, it's a neat little drum computer we'll go over it today in this video kind of do an overview of it a um, little tear down as well this one that I bought was advertised not working so it was cheap and that was one of the main reasons I bought it because Today, these are going for ridiculous money for what it is, I think. Uh, definitely over $100. Clean ones, 150 Really, really, really clean ones. I've seen up towards 200 which I think is crazy. Um, it's a cool little device, but it's not $200 cool. That's for sure. So, anyway, we'll kind of go through it and take a look at it and discuss it in this video. So, like I mentioned, I bought this one broken, so it was cheap. I paid about 65 bucks for it, I think, which was really, really cool. So... It's in good condition, original box, has the original manuals. It does not have the power adapter for it, and it is not working. At least it was reported not working, but I guarantee you this is going to work, and I'll talk about why once we get into it. So, here is the TR505. This device came out in 1986. That's when Roland released it. It was kind of a follow-up device to the Roland 707-727 that came out before it, which were much more powerful uh, drum machines. They had a lot, a lot more control over the sound in terms of uh, pitch individual sounds, levels, etc. This one is a lot more basic. You can't do that. So the sounds in this drum machine are based on your typical drum machine sounds. So you get your bass drum, your snare drum, your toms, etc. But what I like about it is it has some of the Latin drums as well. So it's got your low and high congas. Uh, of course, it's got the hand clap, one of the most important sounds on the drum machine. The sounds themselves on this are PCM based, they're samples, 12-bit uh, samples at a sample rate of 25 kilohertz. So they aren't super high quality sounds, but that's kind of what gives it its charm. And that's one of the reasons why today these are kind of going for a little bit more money because they have that old school sound to them that, you know, isn't pristine and clear, but kind of has, you know, just a, a lower bit rate, lower sampling rate kind of uh, sound to them, which a lot of people like. Now one thing I've seen too is a lot of people think that this was a cut down version of the Roland TR626 which was very similar to this, but it's actually the other way around. The 626 came out in 1987 after the TR505 was released, and the 626 was kind of a revision of the 505. It had a little bit of a different layout, uh, the display was down here at the left, a little bit bigger in size, more sounds, a little bit more control over levels and things like this, so it was a slightly better drum machine, but I wanted the 505 because this is the first drum machine I ever bought and I miss it, I just wanted to get another one back. So as far as inputs and outputs, there's not much. You've got your left and right audio out, uh, headphone out, uh, tape in and out to store things to tape, you got MIDI, um, a, a pedal in, uh, control to start and stop the actual device, uh, DC 9 volts in, and then your power switch. Uh, we'll, we'll run on batteries too, which is kind of nice. The uh, door on this one's actually broken, but it's not a big deal. Um, six AA's, and from what I remember when I had my original one, this is AA's lasted quite a long time. Uh, this is a pretty power efficient unit. Uh, serial number 643556. I don't really know where that lives in the line of the TR505. Once we open it up and take a look inside, we can look at some date codes and kind of get an idea of possibly when this was made. So, as I mentioned, this was reported not working. I guarantee you it's going to work. One thing that a lot of people see, especially when the power adapter is missing, is that the actual DC input is 9 volts at 30 milliamp you know, current draw, but center negative. So, you don't usually see center negative uh, power adapters. Uh, with exception to the rolling gear. I know a lot of their pedals is, is specifically use center negative. But I guarantee you anybody that probably tried to power this on with any 9 volt adapter would get nothing out of it because it's going to be center positive, which is what most power adapters are. Now running this with an incorrect polarity isn't going to damage it. It's going to have input protection on the power input, just the diode, so you can't hurt it, plug it in the wrong way. It just won't work. So to test it, what I'm going to do is I don't have a 9 volt center negative uh, power adapter myself. But I've got bench supplies, so I'm just going to power it from one of my bench supplies, 
9 volts, and we'll see if it powers up and works, which I feel that it will. Alright, so to power this up, I'm just going to use my bench supply. So I will set voltage to 9 volts, and then current will just limit to 100 milliamps for now. And then what I'll do is just got a bunch of uh, cut off ends of you know, your standard power connectors. So we will wire this up, center negative. Plug that in. Touching. I've got audio just going to my little soundboard that I can usually do just through my computer speakers. So I'll put on, power on, and it works. So we've got the split. Do we have sound? We do. So it works, which is cool. Let's see if the sequences work. Usually, there's a bunch of pre programmed songs that this comes with. Of various basic just uh, uh, you know, samples from the factory, but it works, which is awesome. So I'll have to go through and test every feature, but I'm, I'm sure it's probably going to be just fine. But So a lot of these, like I mentioned, um, that's the first thing that usually will happen if it doesn't have a power adapter. People don't know how to power it on, so they sell it untested, and usually it's just fine. The second thing is this power adapter will break on the board. It's just a board-mounted connector. And the solder joints will occasionally break on the bottom. I've seen that happen too. So all you have to do is take it apart, which I'll do here anyway. And then you resolder those on on the bottom and you'll be good. So let's uh, crack it open. You have to take the knobs off this on the front because it's actually tied to the board when you lift it apart. And there is the inside. So we'll take a closer look at this. So here's a look inside the TR505. Uh, I'll quickly kind of go through the circuitry in here. There's a lot going on for such a simple, you know, drum machine as it seems. But uh, keep in mind, 86, Roland was very creative to make these things cost effective and not have a lot of components in them. Uh, that said, there's still a lot going on here, which is pretty cool. So, power input over here. Here's our input jack. This is what I mentioned will often break on the bottom of the board. So to fix that problem, if this was loose, take the board off. There's two screws, and then resolder that connector onto the board in the bottom. So after power comes in, there's a tiny little common mode choke here that does a little bit of line filtering. And then there's your protection diode that I mentioned. So a protection diode just prevents you from, you know, reverse polarity on the input here, damaging anything. Uh, power switch, and then this group of components here is actually a little 5 volt regulator made up of Q5, a transistor, a couple diodes in there, and a couple electrolytic capacitors. So these are pretty small capacitors, and this thing doesn't get very hot. I've never seen capacitors leaking being a problem in TR505, but it wouldn't be a terrible thing to go through and replace them. Uh, there's only a handful on the board, you know, some there, some down here, and a bunch in the audio section, so it would be pretty economical to replace them. But Again, I'm not going to in this. I haven't seen them leak in on at least this or previous 505s that I've, I've had. So, next, uh, following the MIDI, we'll kind of go across the top here. So you got your two MIDI import, uh, ports, MIDI in, MIDI out. MIDI in uh, goes through a small opto-isolator here just to isolate the you know MIDI port from your logic, and that goes down to your CPU. And then MIDI out, the same thing here from the CPU, it goes through a small buffer, and then out the actual MIDI out port. This chip here uh, is the HM6116LP-4. This is actually a RAM chip. I don't know the capacity of it offhand, 8-bit by, I forget, you know, how many, but the actual size of it. But um, it's obvious RAM because it's, it's got the battery backup right next to it. So a classic CR2032. I tested this. I'm still at 3.2 volts, so it's good. I'm not going to bother replacing it. Uh, these typically do last quite some time, uh, but it won't be a terrible thing to replace that if you had to do so. This one, as far as I can tell, is still original to this unit. Next, we have the CPU. This is Roland proprietary, as many CPUs that Roland makes are. This is actually based on the Hitachi HD6301 series of CPUs. A um, little bit bigger package size because it has a little bit more I.O. on there because it's doing a couple more things than necessary. But uh, that's what it's based on. 
the there is actually a little bit of information out there about this that gives pinouts and stuff so it is at least you can find information on it versus a lot of rolling gear you can't in terms of what the actual integrated circuits are across the bottom here we just have some typical glue logic for decoders and other things like that to run a couple different um, you know basically for the address lines off of this decode to you know get your data where it needs to go and select your right interfaces so this next bit of circuitry is pretty interesting. It's what makes up the actual sound generator in the TR505. And it consists of a couple components. IC9 right here, which is a custom IC that basically is uh, an address counter, but it's got multiple address counters in there. Uh, you have your sound ROM, which is this chip here. This actually contains all of your samples for the actual sounds that this unit plays. You've got IC13 up here, which is an HD14051. This is an analog demultiplexer. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. And then you have an op amp here, which is IC12. That is a Mitsubishi part M1518L, I believe. Uh, it's made up of two op amps. So first thing I need to do is correct something I said earlier. The sound samples in this are actually 8-bit. They're not 12-bit. Um, I always thought they were 12-bit, but after looking at some information on this unit and actually looking at the block diagram for it, you can see that this is a standard 8-bit uh, you know, data line EEPROM. And the interesting thing is here is that digital analog converter they're using is actually just a resistor ladder DAC. So you have the 8 bits of data coming off the sound ROM here, and then you're going through a ladder digital analog converter, and then it's being fed into an op amp. So the way that this works, because it does have eight voices of polyphony for you know eight different sounds it can play at once. You can't play any eight sounds. Um, some are blocking to each other. Like you can't play the open hi-hat and closed hi-hat at the same time, uh, as an example. And that kind of has to do with the internal structure of why they put things in the ROM. But that aside, you can play up to eight notes or eight different instruments at once with this device. And the way that it does that is the same way that... Um, a lot of stereo digital analog converters in you know pretty much CD players and all sorts of gear from the 80s including sound processors, effects processors, etc. work where they actually multiplex back and forth between the left and right channels. In this case you're taking that a step further. So you're multiplexing up to eight sounds at once through the ladder deck um, and then amplifying it and then putting it through this demultiplexer which is being controlled by your master CPU. What that does is it allows you to time, time slice, basically, each different sound, you know, in time, in order, out the DAC, you know, through the actual demultiplexer, decode it out, and then drive through eight different sample and hold um, little circuits here. So the sample and hold circuits allow basically you to re reconstruct all those different sounds, you know, um, from the sound ROM through the circuitry, then it combines it all back together, and then puts it out the stereo outs. So it's a pretty cool way of doing this. Um, it was very smart by Roland at the time. Another interesting fact is on the CPU over here, one of the other additional 8-bit um, of outputs on from the CPU goes through a second ladder DAC, um, another 8-bit DAC here. And what this is driving is it's actually driving the envelope generator for these sounds on the output. Um, so this analog signal coming off here is basically going to out, you know, the app apps in the output stage that's actually driving the envelope um, individually for all those sounds sequenced, you know, coming out of here. So it's, it's pretty cool the way it works. IC14 is actually your second um, analog demultiplexer that is driven from the CPU over here, which runs your envelope generator uh, through the circuitry here, one for each voice. Just a couple final notes. You've got your two potentiometers over here. This is your tempo and your volume. Your volume is a stereo pot, so your actual audio output is following through this. If that gets scratchy or you have uneven levels, you could try cleaning that, which may resolve it. Otherwise, you could replace it. Same with the tempo. Uh, it's an analog pot here that actually is you know, converted to digital to drive the actual tempo and clock of the unit internally. Um, if your tempo is jumping around, same thing. That could potentially be dirty. So one note about the sound ROM, it's actually been reverse engineered by some people and there are some mods out there where basically you can remove this chip, um, put a daughter board on that contains a, you know, a 27C256 or 128K EEPROM and put your own sounds on it. Um, it's kind of neat, but I have no interest in doing that myself. I bought the TR505 because of the sounds that are already on it, kind of just a classic machine like that. It's kind of neat that somebody actually took the time to reverse engineer that though.
I wanted to take a look at some date codes on here just to see when this was made. So, uh, 27th week 85, 27th week 85, 27th week 85, 11th week 85, 51st week 85, uh, 51st week 85. Late 85 would be the absolute earliest this was made. So I'm not seeing any chips labeled earlier than mid-1985. Early 1986 is probably when this was actually produced. So this concludes the overview and mini teardown of the Roland TR-505. Hopefully you found this interesting and thank you for watching.